Hello, all you beautiful people of this great pig milker army. What up, brother? Welcome to the 54th episode of your favorite podcast and mine, The Comcast, our one year anniversary. Is it sad that this is not my favorite podcast? <laughs> this is my favorite podcast. It makes me laugh the most twice because I listen to it after it gets uploaded to make sure we're not doing anything wrong. Mm. So. This week's Beer of the Week, a personal favorite from Kona Brewing Co., the Big Wave Golden Ale. The Big Wave Golden Ale is a lighter body golden ale with a traditional hop aroma and flavor. Smooth, easy drinking, and refreshing. This beer I had for the first time on our on our first visit to Jacksonville, Florida for our, uh, one of our vacations a few years ago. This beer is phenomenal. It is light. It's an everyday drinker. Tastes particularly good on a Saturday around 2 p.m. Um, this a this beer has an ABV of 4.4 percent and has been awarded numerous gold, silver, and bronze medals ever since 2011. With the latest award being in 2019 silver medal for the Session Beer Best of Craft Beer Award. Uh, so go out and get you some today. It is brewed in all 50 states. This brewery is located in Makaha in the island of Oahu in Hawaii. So get your beer today. Thank you so much to Kona Brewing Co. for producing this great beer and many others like it. Now let's get into the fucking episode, our one year anniversary. I love this intro music and you should love it too because it's awesome. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the one-year anniversary of the Comcast. I am Ryan, your best friend and host. Also joining me is the bald boy wonder, bitch boy, titty milk, Cody. Whoop, whoop, show me where you poop. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? So glad that you can join us for this one-year anniversary of the Comcast. I know a year is 52 episodes, but we gave you two extra bonus episodes. because See, I don't remember that, though. We're generous as fuck. So, you know. When did we do... T- we, we did a Christmas, Christmas episode, episode, and then we did a Sunday Funday extra added episode. We did? Mm-hmm. I don't remember that. Uh, the That's Sunday probably f- why. <laughs> the, su- the Sunday Because we were here like all day, weren't we? Yeah. Well, I got here at 11 a.m. And we drank and grilled and... Yeah, we drank and grilled, and I think I left here around five, five or six. Hmm. It, yeah, so I, we gave two additional episodes because we're generous as shit here at the Comcast. Um, so, welcome... Thank you so much for tuning in to this podcast. Thank you so much for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. That yeah, way why you- the fuck aren't you subscribed? Yeah. Why are you listening to this and you're not fucking subscribed? See, if you subscribe, everyone, you can get uh, a notification when our podcasts are uploaded. Or if you already know the day, it's every Friday. So you should. Uh, yeah, bitch. 9 a.m. If you're a lawyer, if you're a, lo- a lot of lawyer, if you're a lawyer, you probably don't listen to this. If you're a loyal member of the pig milker army, then you know what day this podcast gets uploaded on. Yes, sir. So thank you so much for tuning in, guys. Yeah, we couldn't do this without you guys. Uh, Could not do without you. I'm um, just honestly, I'm just glad we have downloads. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had I have I had no idea that we would be doing this a year from now. Mm-mm. Um, if I, honestly, I I'm not one to quit hardly at all ever. But if if we didn't receive any downloads, if we if we had been do if we were doing this for you know six seven months and we weren't receiving any downloads or any kind of love from anybody, I it would have been pretty down for me. Like this this the Comcast might have been this podcast might have been a different story right now. To be honest with you, just because like I said, I don't quit a lot of things, but th- it would have been really 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 hard. To resist the urge to not do this anymore. So we, I don't, and it is. And people might think, oh, you just get up there and talk for like an hour, an hour and a half, or whatever. But it is kind of difficult getting people together and finding stuff to talk about. And we've gotten arguments and all this shit. And Cody's threatening to get up and walk away. But I live here, so I can't go anywhere. But he can. A lot of things have <laughs> gone down behind the scenes that you guys don't really hear or yeah. see or know of. Uh, some stress. It, it, this, this is something I take pride in doing. This is something I come every week and, and enjoy doing. Uh, no matter what happens before or after the, the recording, 
I still 100% enjoy the time I have here. Yeah, it's a good thing we can argue and forget about it 20 minutes later. Because, that's, if, we, both see, because if we couldn't, then we'd never get this shit done. But also, that's another reason why uh, we are still kind of friends as relatives. Because I ain't your fucking friend. <laughs> You're my sidekick. Because we can, we can have arguments and bounce back. Within a half an hour, yeah, is the thing. That's that's what makes that's what makes this podcast uh, uh, come together a little bit more. I feel like that's all dudes anyway. The, like br- you can the brutality, with- the brutality of masculinism uh, against each other. Yeah, but that's like all dudes, and like they can just they can fist fight, and then the next you know an hour later, pass each other a beer, and you know have fun. And then I know women that are just like they got in a fight over. Uh, who's using the bathroom and they don't talk to each other for fucking women, years. Women hold grudges yes. so hard. Yes, I do. Now, I, I'm not going to judge because I am very prone to hold grudges against certain people depending on the severity of what they've done to me and how how bad I feel like it, it is towards myself. That I can hold grudges against. Sometimes it's for life, honestly, or the very distant, unforeseen future. But other than that, I feel like dudes don't really hold one as much. There is some guys that do hold them for petty, stupid shit, I know. But most of the time, because guys don't really have a lot of fucking friends. No. And the reason why women don't really have that big uh, group of friends is because they hold grudges so much. I know uh, almost every woman I know. I'm not, I'm not being judgmental or anything, but I know almost every woman I know does not have a big group of friends. I I asked my girlfriend. And if they do, they're all dudes. Right. With with Cheyenne, with Indiana still being on lockdown, I said, well, have you texted any of your friends lately? And she goes, what fucking friends? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you don't really have any, do you? She goes, no. I well, said, and if they do, they're just, they're guys. They're, that or it's just like, you can call them your close friend, but you you don't see them. You know, but maybe once or twice a year. Right. So, and honestly, that's what, I mean, as adults with our busy lives and careers and families and uh, a lot of our close friends having kids, that's the way it happens sometimes. We only get to see our group of friends that we've had since high school. Like every three or four months. Yeah, every three or four months. So, maybe th- three or four times and a this year. And hap- this shit going on doesn't help. But um, the way I see it is, is like, life's too short to... Be pissed off and hold grudges all the time. It's just, it is. It doesn't. It's. It doesn't make sense. You don't need to be mad at somebody when you can, when you can just let it go and you know be cool with them again. It doesn't matter. I mean, that's the way I've I've always saw it. If it's if it's something little and you can just be like, I I forgive you and just get over it and move on. It's, so. it's one of those. It's one of the, it goes back a long time. It's one of those. If you have an argument with somebody or you're pissed off with somebody, and if you after you're mad, if you can't remember what the hell you were mad about, yeah, it was stupid. That's me because it was 100 percent. I know you hold grudges like that, and I'm kind of just like I and I just like forget or just don't care anymore. You are a stone in a rolling river. Everything rolls off of your back, and that's pretty much it. And then you just slowly wear down from the pressure, and then you turn into a shiny, smooth stone. Okay, after you know, <laughs> fifty years or so. Uh, what is me having to turn? You're into halfway a- to a shiny, smooth stone right now, Ryan. You still got some rough edges. Oh boy. It was a metaphor. I don't know what for. I, it did make sense. I can tell you that. It, it, you had the rock in the river. Everything just rolls over. But we should have stopped fucking there. You do that all the time. You just like, you say something good and then you fuck it up like a sentence later. It's entertaining though, isn't it? No, it's not, it's not entertaining. It just sounds stupid. Um, so thanks everybody for uh, joining us this week. I, I don't really have anything to talk about. You got anything to talk about? You don't have anything to talk about? What? You you live a life every fucking week. What the hell are you? What are you even saying? I don't know. Yeah, I understand if you don't have any news articles to talk about. Like, yeah, I got some news articles. Yeah, okay. So we're not doing news articles yet. It, I, why? Oh, the, we've been doing this for a fucking year, dude. Like, bro, what the fuck? Like, I don't know. I don't. I don't really have anything to talk about this week. Nothing really happened to me. You don't really. You do the same fucking shit every week. But for some reason, you have shit to talk about every week. I do. Now, how does this? The commemoration of our anniversary of this podcast, the Comcast. Hashtag milk that pig. Hashtag pig milk army. Hashtag this is awesome. 
you decide to not have anything to say. I don't know. I, I feel like I just say that, though, and I end up just talking about something. I lost four more pounds this week. Woo! <laughs> what are you up? What are you? What are you up to now? Uh, it would be forty-six. Forty-six pounds. Yes. Awesome. And at fifty, I'm eating a whole pizza. No. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's not how you. I got a Red Baron brick oven in the freezer, and I'm eating it. <laughs> you have a, wait, so you your idea of a celebration is a six fifty pounds, and I get to eat. Hold on, a it six, was four. It was two for four, I think. I don't remember. Two was, pizzas for four dollars? I think so. So your celebration hey, it's is It's the a, coronavirus sale. Your celebration is a four dollar pizza. Yeah. What else? I, I, I order good pizza. I haven't had pizza in like four months. Order good pizza. Like Come to come to my place and we'll order good pizza. Why? Why not? Because Four dollar pizza is still good, right? No, yeah. no, it's, it's not. Four dollars a slice, maybe. It'll make me feel better. <laughs> uh, no, it can also it can actually probably make you feel like crap. I don't know. Well, I'll feel like crap for like three days, and then I'll be good. No big deal. But well, I have already made it my mission when I hit fifty pound loss that I'm eating a whole pizza. That's fine. <laughs> that's fine. I when I was. When I was starting out the first couple of years, I used to have cheat days once a month. I would completely hate myself for that month, and then I would splurge, and then I'd gain like five pounds of it back. But I don't do that anymore. I just, For me personally, there's nothing wrong with how other people feel about it. For me personally, cheat days, I don't contribute to them because... I basically eat Yeah, everybody says every Friday. I feel like that sets me back so much. Every Friday is like saying, hey, I worked my ass off for two days. But the thing is, now I get to do it again. You get Friday, but then you get Saturday, Sunday, and you don't do shit because you feel like shit on Friday. Exactly. It turns into, that's what happened to me. And then you come back on Monday, and you're like, yeah, maybe Tuesday. So you get three solid days, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then Friday, you fuck it up all over again. That's what happened to me. I would just... Because I remember mom would tell me that and she'd be like, oh, you met, it's okay to have a cheat day like once a week. Don't listen to and mom. Th- I know. And then get back on track and all this stuff. And I was like, okay, well, I did that. And it just, but it fucked me up for three days because I would just nonstop. I would eat stupid shit on the weekend because that's that's the mentality mom's, I had. Mom's generation thought sucralose was a good idea. <clears throat> Don't listen to mom. Mom says fattening. Fattening is not a, a real thing. Fattening is not a real thing. Eating too much fat not a real and thing. Cholesterol. As long as as long as it is a healthy fat, yeah. it does not matter. Like avocados, nuts, seeds, healthy oils, not fucking canola. Not canola. Yeah, people use canola for like frying though. Not canola, bro. You can use olive oil for frying too. You That's use, expensive. You can use avocado oil for frying if too. If you're gonna fry like a turkey, you don't look, if you're if you wanna live past 60. Go ahead and spend two more dollars for some fucking extra virgin olive oil, bro. Like, quit being a cheap fuck. Honestly, I would just say buy an air fryer. Those I, things I, are the best. I'm going to give you guys a hard dose of truth right now. If Here you we want, fucking go. If you want to live a healthy lifestyle, you have to sacrifice what you eat for the things you want to eat. The things you want to eat on this healthy lifestyle, you have to sacrifice the old things. It will be more expensive the new way. But for a fraction, honestly, of, not really. For a fraction, well, see, if you're sacrificing that, it will be a little bit more expensive by a few dollars here and there. So it doesn't for me because, like, if you buy, if you eat, like, if you buy a bunch of frozen vegetables and like frozen fruit and stuff like that, it's not that expensive because, like, a frozen bag of vegetables for and that'll last you like all day, right? Is like ninety seven cents for like a California medley or something like that, right? It's not that bad. No, it's not. I'm not going out and telling you guys to buy organic. Uh, uh, I personally do buy organic because I have tasted the difference in those cer- in certain things. I don't buy organic in in certain things. Um, but I do in a lot of fresh produce and greens because I have tasted the difference. And let me just tell you, a f- organic banana does not taste like a regular banana. Really? I 100% a, re- a normal, not Monkey organic. proven? <laughs> a regular non-organic banana takes longer to ripen, longer to over-ripen. Right. It, it tastes twice as sweet and it's twice as large. 
And I will recommend everybody to drink these green shakes. They taste like shit, but it gives you your daily dose of fruits and vegetables, like the vitamins you need and probiotics. And for some reason, they make me feel a whole lot better if I drink it like in the morning or like while I'm eating lunch or something like that. It just gives you like a pick me up. Well, the thing about a green shake is you have to make sure that it's a a good quality brand because a lot of green shakes, they just fill it full of non-essential bullshit. And sugar. No, yeah. If, you're, if your green shake has more than one gram of sugar in it, don't buy it. Right. Um, it, it, it should be preferably an organic brand. I personally use, um, it's a vegan brand, it's my favorite, and it's Ormus Super Greens by Sun Warrior. That's the brand, Sun Warrior, which is a vegan brand. Um, and if anybody knows vegetables, like, uh, ve- uh, like uh, anybody knows vegetables as vegans. So I use a vegan brand. That's my favorite. The standard brand I use, I get it off of Amazon because it's cheaper. Just, yeah. just a little, you know, trick for you guys. And it's I like use, 30 bucks for like three months. Yeah. I use amazing grass. I, uh, amazing grass is the brand and I use their green shakes. They're organic. They're all natural. They're ethically sourced. They have everything you need, and they're a decent price. Mm-hmm. Both of these items are a decent price for what you can get. But I, but that is just a – if you don't eat a lot of vegetables, if you don't get a lot of vitamins, if you don't take supplements uh, for vitamins like a good quality multivitamin, then – a green shake is a perfect way to go. It really is. I just drink them every day, even though I eat like right. a salad with like the power greens, like the baby kale and the baby spinach and all that right. shit. I'll still drink one of them. Right. Uh, a green shake is a good way to go. It, it has fruits, vegetables. And just make sure you get everything you need. Exactly. And so in this Corona time is right. what you need. I, I recommend one. Um, I approve of them. Just make sure it's a good brand. Make Coronavirus. Sure the, make sure the ingredients are organic. Um, and I will say, don't for the go for the overpriced bullshit, but don't no. go for the cheap bullshit either. Right. Go for the moderate or affordable kind. And the one, the kind, cause we get the same one, but it's like 30 bucks and I get it shipped every three months and I still got probably another two or three weeks still in that thing. I, I just went all out and I spent 40, 40 or 45 on the big one. Uh, yeah, I got the hundred serving one. Yeah. So I've been milking that for a while. Now, that's that just goes for green shakes, but going back to what I was saying, it is going to be a little bit more expensive, but paying 60 cents more for this product because it's healthier and natural and doesn't have a bunch of additives in it or preservatives and it it could possibly be, be it could possibly be organic, doesn't have to be. That is a sacrifice I'm willing to make. If you're comfortable with your financial standing, because I will say eating healthy, it is going to be more expensive in the long run, but you have to sacrifice your old thing, your old way, your old habits to make up the difference. And it will actually cushion the financial deficit that you might feel if, if you, let's say you keep those old things. Yeah. Because you get a lot, you get a, you get a lot for a small price on these poor preservative quality products. But there's a reason why, because they're cheap to make. And it's, it's not cheap to make organic products. And it's stuffed with bad stuff. Right. It, it's stuffed with bad stuff. Right. Stuffed with... There being C words and stuffing your stuff with bad stuff. Right. The 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 food quality in the United States, opposed to other countries, literally sucks big old whale cock. Yeah. It really does. It, it, the food quality in the United States sucks because we, we came up with preservatives and then we fill full of everything. And it, I, it takes me... It's not even a second thought to look at the back of a package anymore, and it takes 10, 15 seconds to look at the back of this package, I, and I see what the ingredients are. I look at a couple different things, the sugar content being one of them. I know I've said this before, but it's very simple, and if you do it enough, it becomes second nature, and you don't even think about it when you do it, but I'm proud of you. That's awesome that you've Who, lost- me? Yes. That oh. You've lost 46- Oh my gosh, thank 46 you. 46 pounds. That's great. Now, all you got to do is stay on it. Like, don't stop. I mean, I'm not going anywhere. When you come to a place, I know you haven't gone anywhere since you've had, since you've since done it last time. January 2nd, baby. But you haven't, but see, you haven't gone anywhere since the last time you tried it. And I know if you've tried it a few other times, but it's. No, just- I never lasted. The- Wait, what? Well, I think the first time we did keto was like six or seven months, maybe. 
And then I finally gave up, and I think we both did for a little bit. And then that was the most I lost. I was like, I think I lost um, maybe 60 pounds, but I was heavier back then. So, but I'm lower than I was back then. Right. Even though I lost more. Right. Back well, then. Well, because you kept part of your healthy your Yeah, healthy I kept life. 30 pounds off after right. that. Right. You kept part of your healthy lifestyle from, that was But that was four, like, was I was doing, four years ago. I was doing night shift what I was now and what like I am now. And I was like working like 2.30 to 11 and I would just get up and I would microwave those frozen Tyson chicken patties, eat two of them and two sandwiches maybe chips, then go to work, not eat, then come home, eat the same shit. And it was like Tyson chicken patties, frozen pizzas, and potato chips, and all that shit. And I don't remember the last time I don't eat that stuff anymore. You don't remember the last time you bought the Me neither. I don't remember the last time I bought that shit. No. No, I just, I can't remember the last time I got it. I oppose fast food. I really do. Uh, it's, it's just a personal preference. Now I'm not sitting here telling you that you have to do this. It's in the end, it's all based on whatever you decide. It really is. I don't know. Maybe one day I'll cave and go get a Wendy's Baconator or something. But uh, you will feel like garb town and you'll shit your pants. Probably. I guarantee it. I already shit my pants already. I fucking, I bent down to uh, go into work yesterday and, uh, <laughs> bent over to fart. And I was like putting my booties on cause it's clean. And I was putting my stuff on. And I bent over and got ready to fart, and I was gonna shit my pants, and I turned the fuck around and ran to the and, bathroom. And, and, I'm, and that's that's not that is just your body's natural reaction. It really is like it, you will you will eventually quit almost shitting your pants. I'm telling you guys. Well, it's just I drank this, and I didn't really eat anything. That green shake and yeah. that stuff just it goes right through you. Right. So that's it's just your and honestly, when you start, let's say you decide to start your your weight loss journey or not even weight loss journey, just eating healthy, eating better, making your lifestyle better. Because I will tell you a hundred percent you will feel the best you've ever felt, but you cannot feel that until you do it. Right. I promise you you will feel the best you've ever felt. And it's not you just have to get the mentality. Stay away. I don't go down the chip aisle. Yeah. I don't go down like the cracker aisle. Nothing like that. Like you just want to make sure you buy a bunch of vegetables. Like forty percent of your budget should be like fresh greens and a bunch of fresh produce and stuff like that. But then like you can trade like potato chips or whatever for like Skinny Pop. I mean they have Skinny Pop everywhere. Popcorn is one of the best. Uh, not. Popcorn with butter and all this other shit on it. Yeah. Now, popcorn, so I would say unsalted, unflavored, unbuttered popcorn with some like grass fed butter or just uh, grass fed butter would be the best, but normal butter, unsalted, and some Himalayan pink salt. That is fucking awesome because popcorn is one of the best snacks because it has a, it has a huge amount of insoluble fiber. Which is great for our digestive system and our bodies and cholesterol and blood pressure and all that stuff. Fiber is absolutely important. Mm -hmm. But I will say, guys, you will feel the best you've ever felt. And it's not a feeling that anybody can explain. It's just you wake up one day after doing it for a, you know, a little while, maybe a week or two weeks. It, it, sometimes it can take that long. You just wake up one day and you're like, shit, I feel amazing. Right. And I know something that helped me with like desserts. Like I haven't had, I haven't had anything sweet since January, but like something that really helped me is yogurt. If you shop uh, like locally and you have like a Kroger or something like that and they have Kroger brand stuff, they have the little yogurts that are Carb Master and they have like all these flavors and stuff like cinnamon roll like is which is the best one now i know a lot of people that but don't. that helped me if i was craving yeah. something sweet i would eat one of those and it curved my sweet tooth now because I know, it just I, tastes good i know a lot of people that don't like those flavors but the we're coming from two different if you don't fucking like cinnamon roll yogurt right. well, get just, the fuck away well, from me see we're me and you are uh, you and i are coming from two different standpoints you're coming from Still a beginner's perspective of it. Oh, when you're fucking Neil deGrasse Tyson. No, no, I'm not. No, I'm not saying I am. I know what I've researched. I know what I've heard experts talk about. And I know from experience what worked for me. But 
I know a lot of people that don't like those. Everybody's different. And yogurt, if but see, if you're going from, it just depends on what you want. If you want to lose weight, great. If you're going for a more whole food, non-preservative, uh, non-additive diet, then those are not the brand for you because they I do think have everybody them. should just start because they right trying to eat better. But see, but see. If you're go, it just depends on what you're going for. Like I just, like I just said, it just depends on. But what you got to start somewhere. Yeah, what you're looking for. I personally, I like whole milk. Whole milk. Uh, I prefer, I prefer organic yogurt. So I like whole milk yogurt with the fat. It does have sugar in it, but it does have protein. But that fat um, makes it a little. It makes it slower to digest all that sugar because the slowest molecule in your body that it can digest is fat and whole milk yogurt is a, one of those healthy fats I talked about. So basically your body slows molecule. It can digest this fat. Like I said, so when you eat carbs and some sugars and stuff like that, try to add some healthy fats to whatever you're eating to slow down that process. That's why I drink coconut oil in my coffee or MCT oil which is derived from coconuts, if you don't know what that is. But I use uh, organic, unrefined coconut oil in my coffee. It makes it taste coconutty and delicious and creamy and smooth. But that fat slows down the caffeine absorption in your body so it doesn't crash your system, makes the, the coffee last longer, it tastes awesome, and it doesn't shock your system. Because coffee is good for us, but it also harshes our bodies a little bit when it uh, when you when it's consumed too fast or it doesn't have some kind of fat to slow it down. You could also try whole milk. You could also drink whole milk in your coffee or something like that with the fat in it to slow it down. It's just it's all about it's it's all about where you stand, what you want, and how advanced you are in your knowledge and experience. You cannot learn everything at once. And if you want to try keto, I can't keep you from doing keto because no, how, no matter how many people I told to try easing into it slowly because it's very hard to stay on keto unless you're very disciplined, which the average individual is not if they've never tried anything like that before. They never listen to me and they do it anyway and they wind up quitting because like I said, it's extremely hard. Yeah, you got to be fucking dedicated to you that. Very, you, have to have very, you have to be very disciplined to do keto. So... I recommend doing low carb if you want to do keto. I can't stop you from doing keto, but if you've never taken my advice before and you're listening to this podcast or you're you've never heard me talk about this before or your first time listener, just please try something a little less drastic than keto, then advance into it, but do it the right way with the healthy fats and the healthy oils and nuts and seeds. That is the way to go. Avocados and the greens and good lean protein. Because if you're doing it with hot dogs and processed cheese, you're not going to get there, Jack. You're just not. You're going to wind up having a coronary. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I knew a guy at work. And he, he said he lost. What did he say? He said he lost 60 pounds one summer, but he was like up working around like doing labor and shit. Right. But that's all he would eat is he'd eat two hot dogs a day. And that was it. And he lost like 60 pounds. Now, don't get like, it twisted. Yeah. You will lose weight. <laughs> yeah. You will lose weight when you transfer from carbs to keto or carbs to low carbs because you're shocking your body. Your body's like, oh, shit, something's different. I'm not getting what I used to get. So now I'm going to process all this and you will lose weight. You'll lose water. You'll start to lose fat. You that will. was me. I lost I, 30 pounds yeah. in one month. I promise you, you will lose weight when you change up your diet. You will. Because it shocks your body and because you're taking away something that it didn't have and giving it something else that's healthier for it. So you will lose weight. I promise you will. But it'll stop. It 100% will. You will plateau. That's why you have to do it the right way to keep going. And it's, it, it, but you will lose weight. You will. It will shock your body. And eating not enough, starving your body. Like the two the two hot dogs a day and that's it. I mm -hmm. talked to a guy in the gym. He actually uh, he's seen my progress, but he because he's been going there for a year and he to stopped and talked to me. And the guy I I never got his name, but he told me he the only thing he would eat a day was around five p.m. or six. He said for dinner he would eat a can of tuna, 
with some uh, spinach and ranch all over it. That's the only thing he would eat. That sounds disgusting. All, all the, I know. That's the only thing he would eat all day long. And I seen him in there every day because I would be in the gym six days, six five or six days a week, and I would see him in there every single day, sweating his ass off, working hard, doing work. Um, and he was he he was complaining about being exhausted every single day. And I said, "You're taking in maybe six seven hundred calories." And I said, "You are slowly killing yourself." Yeah, you really are. I you have to eat. And I had this this this, this discussion with you about a month ago. Because you told me what you were eating and you weren't taking in maybe 1,100 calories a day. That's probably less than that. Yeah. So eating more yields a better outcome. Well, I've been talking to people at work with this too because they would say that they're always tired and stuff like that. And I would say, well, what are you eating? Well, I ate before I came here, but I I was talking to a girl who's our friend at work and she was saying, oh, I had a ham sandwich before I came here. And she's like, but I won't probably won't eat the rest of the day. And I was like, well, that's why you're so tired. I said, you you don't have anything in your fucking right. body. Yeah, fuel your body with your food. Your, with your food. So provide the necessary nutrients and whole foods and good healthy ingredients that fuel your body. That is what you want. That is gonna produce the outcome that you want and the feeling that you desire. The feeling that I feel right. on a daily basis. I want every single fucking person to feel that too because it feels amazing. It really does. And it's crazy how it's different. Like if you went from like eating like hamburgers and french fries and, you know, pizza and all this junk and whenever you took a dump, it probably smelled like high heaven and, you know, you took a big shit like we like I used to. And now that I don't, they're not, I mean, they're regulated but they're not, I'd probably take one a day, but it's hardly anything comes out anymore because your body is using everything that you eat with that stuff. Right. So basically if you're eating, the average adult male needs to at least take in 1500 calories. If you're monitoring your calories, if you're not eat three times a day, guys, or if you want to, if you want to not, if you want to skip breakfast. Eat a eat a pretty moderate healthy lunch and then feast like a king at night and get your workout in, get your activity in, whatever you do if you're working out. If you're not working out, I 100% recommend it because that's the other part of it. You 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 got to be active every single day. If not, you know you know three, four, or five times a week, you got to do something. You you have to because you will see your progress skyrocket even farther. Your feeling will be even better. Uh, emotionally, physically, mentally. Uh, so, because if you, you have to fuel your, and back to what I was saying, if you starve your body of the nutrients, it's going to take this. So this guy was eating only about 600, six or 700 calories a day burning. He, okay. So if he was eating a very, you know, very good, healthy diet with lots of food, lots of good nutrients and vitamins, he would have been losing weight. He had been plateaued, I think he said, for about four or five months. And Jesus. I, and I told him that I told him that he was basically starving himself. So that tuna and with the salad in the ranch, his body was taking that, storing it as fat because it could it wasn't getting anything else. Yeah, he and he was anything. literally sweating his ass off, working, working his butt off, doing work in the gym every day, and not getting anywhere. He was actually because he was just burning off that stored fat. Exactly. But see, burning off your stored fat, you're also losing muscle. You're you're losing um, necessary. You're you're basically your body's eating itself. If you're not getting what you need, your body's gonna start eating itself, and that includes your muscle. And I said, basically, what you've been doing. I said, basically, this all this work you've been doing in the gym, lifting weights and stuff. You're you're losing your muscle tone. Mm -hmm. If you lose any weight, your half it's probably gonna be your muscle. It, it maybe half is probably gonna be your muscle. So lifting on these weights is not going to do you any good. Right. It's not. If you, you have to feed your body. If you're working your ass off in the gym every day, you need to up it to, you know, if you're, if you're a guy that weighs 250 pounds. So if you're, if you're a, you know, a guy that's six foot, 250 pounds, pretty big guy. Mm. You need to at least, if you're working your ass off every single day, you need to at least eat 
15, 18, 2,000 calories. Depending on how, how hard you're working, if you're monitoring your calories. If you're not, just eat three good, decent meals. You don't have to start, you don't have to be hungry, you don't have to be full. Just eat food and you'll see results. You but you have to keep doing, you have to keep up, you have to maintain the discipline and maintain the daily grind and schedule that you want and you'll see the results and feel the results that you want and the thing that you desire because that's what I want you to feel. I want all of you to feel that. I want you to feel that, Ryan. I want everybody to do that because it is one of the single most amazing things you'll ever experience in your life. It it's really better. is. Other than your child being born or getting married or buying your first house or all those other expensive things, this is... You can have all the money in the world, but if you don't feel good, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Donald Trump, he drinks a 12-pack of Coke a day. Probably feels like shit. He's got a lot of money. Yeah. And a hot wife. So... He's got if a, you can so call her a wife. Donald Trump literally has everything in the. She's he, a gold digger. She ain't no wife. <laughs> so Donald Trump literally has everything a man could ask for besides age, um, and hair, and skin tone. The him aside, if you put if you put any of us in his place, if you put me or you in his place with the wife and the money and the house, besides, I don't want to be the president. Fuck that. I do not want to be the president. But take everything else. That's the fucking life, dude. But if you drink a 12 pack of Coke a day and you sit on your ass and eat McDonald's Diet every day, Coke. like he does. Oh, sorry, Diet Coke. Yes. My bad. All the aspartame. That's why he's orange. Oh, wait, no. What was that article? It was from Light Bulbs. He, he told people he was orange from Light Bulbs. No, and then they came out with a picture and, like, and it showed him, like, uh, in, like, they have, like, those sheets pulled up or the things and he was getting spray tan and he was, like, nude. And he was just like, you know, the face he makes with yeah. his eyes closed and shit. And he was like that. And it had a little Asian lady and she was like no, spraying dude him. Dude doesn't get orange from the light balls. But no, it's spray tan, dude. But that's the thing. Like, I guarantee he feels like garbage every day because of his diet. But he literally has he literally has all the money in the world to eat eat better eat better and more expensive things than I could ever afford right now because of his money. He can afford to eat. Better quality things, and like they have, but he decides not. To. They have those chefs, those personal chefs that'll make you whatever you want. Right, and he's just like, I just want dinosaur chicken nuggets and pizza rolls, and that is all. Yeah, diet so, coke in the fridge. Yeah, see, so it doesn't matter how much money you have. It's that is like and that goes back to me saying it's all about what you want, what you want to do, what you want for your life, how you want to feel, how you want to, how how you want to look. It's, it all comes back to you, what you want to do, but only you can do it. You got to have that discipline. And I am done talking about this subject because we're probably... Next episode. Bye, everybody. We're probably boring, <laughs> we're probably boring the shut up people. I know there's probably some people that, you know, have well, my... Well, that's what I like about this. We don't have a narrative. Right. I, I know there's probably some people that have my... My my drive and your drive to better themselves, and I'm not saying you're any better. I'm not saying you're you're not as good of a person if you don't. There's nothing wrong with that. If you're happy with who you are and how you look, you can always change your situation. Do that. If my I have an ethos for myself, and it's one of those one of those bullet points on the ethos is be your be happy and be yourself. Yeah. And if you want to do something, do it, and you know who you are. Be that. Yeah, and if so, you're not happy in your situation, you can change it. You 100% you can. do can. whatever you want. This is America. You have the ability. Ryan Ryan and I have been big our entire lives. Still am big. Still am. <laughs> but Ryan and I have been big our entire lives. And I the, the saying big bone does not exist. It does not exist. So whoever tells you that, I don't care if your doctor tells you that, Big Boned is not a fucking thing. No, you might have a big body type. Our mom, bless her heart, love her to death. Like I said, her generation invented sucralose. And if we want to get, if you want to get into sucralose, we can get into that. And and Tupperware. (laughs) If you want to get into sucralose, we can get into that. But... It's it's not a fucking thing. Big bones not a thing. So don't tell people that because I I don't I don't I don't like gloating. I try to stay very humble about myself, but I answered the question for myself that big bone is not a thing. My bones are no different than anybody else's. My body type is different, but not my bones. And I didn't think I'd ever be who I am right now, but 
It's not a thing. It's not. And I've proved myself that, and I've proved that to other people, and that is what keeps me going. I, I, and I, and the feeling that I get, uh, how happy I am with myself. And I want, and when people come up to me and tell me that it's great, I just say, thank you. I appreciate it. And if they have any questions, I, I try to offer advice only if they're seriously inquiring, because I've had a lot of people come up in the years that have taken my advice, like I said before, and they do what I don't recommend, which you're only going to do what you want anyway. And I know that. So it kind of gets me down sometimes, but I try to give advice to everybody that asks it. But I, cause I want to, I, like I said, I want you guys to see what you can look like and to feel what you can feel like. Even if like you don't start losing weight immediately, once you switch to eating better, you feel better. You, it's, it's a different, you may not see results for a little bit, but you will feel better but bef- you will feel different right that before you start losing weight and that i think that makes it worth it like i kept the 30 pounds off and but i changed the way i eat yeah i would slip up every once in a while but i for the most part 80 percent of the time 70 80 percent of the time i would eat a lot of greens i would eat different and i would eat better but don't ever feel stuck in a situation. If you want to do something about it, you have to take that you, step. You are smarter. Like, yeah, sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, you you bitch. are smarter than <laughs> your body. You are smarter than your body. You really are. You all you really gotta do are. is just take that initiative, and it'll all be worth it in the end. Initiative and develop that discipline, and you can do anything you want. You really can, guys. And most people, they say, oh, "I just want to lose twenty pounds. I just need to lose fifteen pounds before B season." That's great. If that's all you want, do it. If you don't lose any weight, that's fine too. Just take steps to eat a better diet. L- weight loss comes from change. You will lose weight even though you don't want to. It might not be much. It might be 5, 10 pounds, and you can live with that. That's fine. But the feeling you're going to get from eating the better diet, the better quality, the wholer ingredient, the no preservative, the no additives, the lower, the very low sugar, high emphasis on that. Stay away from the sugar. You will feel great even though you don't lose weight. And if you're good with that, you're good with that. That's fine. That is perfectly fine. It's just taking the steps to be who you want to be and to do what you want to do. Yep. Now, with that being said, I would like to request a piss break because I have to go. Okay. Okay. Pee break. And we're back. We are back, everybody. Uh, the last thing I'll say about the the health-related stuff that we just talked about, um, if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, if you want to know anything, you want us to talk about anything with that, uh, you can email the podcast uh, at thecomcast at gmail.com. Uh, it's in the description of the episode. If I, I mean, if you don't want to email it to us, that's fine. We're just asking to hear input. I know we've been asking for a year, so I'm not expecting anything. But if anybody out there wants to know anything, I, I'm not claiming to be an expert. But if, if I can relate to that situation and I can help you with an answer or maybe I can um, help you find a solution... Or we can together. When it comes to real world situations, yeah. you would be better than anybody. Right. That when, I it can com- think of. when it comes to real world average, I'm a I'm an average American from the Midwest. So if if I can help you with anything, I will gladly help you. Free advice. I don't charge. I never fucking will. I'm not a doctor. I just know what I've experienced over the years and it'll be four years in June. So my journey is always going to continue for the rest of my life and I'm going to grow my knowledge every year until then. So like I said, if you have any questions, comments, if you need any advice, I will hundred percent will help you and it's Comcast approved Mm -hmm. and I will put that stamp (laughs) on every, I don't know how credible that fucking stamp is, but Um, like I said, if we get a trademark, that's a hundred percent credible. Right. So, now let's move on to the most exciting fucking news. Ba 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 ba. Ba 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 ba. We have a new fucking logo courtesy of Sam Bob's sister at Trippin' Bunnies on Instagram and Twitter. And her artist name is Bunny Skull. She signed the artwork, her signature on the actual artwork of our new logo. And if you haven't noticed so far, you're like, 
what the fuck's that logo popping up on my notifications, you know, because I subscribe to this podcast called The Cumcast because it's fucking awesome, you know, that's why I subscribe to it. <laughs> You're like, what's this new logo popping up? That is our new fucking logo, a.k.a. AKA the, there is no AKA. There is no AKA. It's just our new fucking logo. <laughs> our new fucking logo. It's just uh, our new artwork. Brought to us by um, uh, the artist Bunny Skull, Sam Bob's sister, who did a fucking amazing job. During uh, we've been, I've been keeping Ryan posted on the development, um, all the rough drafts, and then she finally produced it in color, and it it is. I am beyond happy with it. It's dope, and the price that she charged us was just it. It was incredibly. It was incredibly um, a very generous price. It really was. We we decided to give her more because it is we feel like that was worth that and going to somebody else it would be worth that or more. So love her artwork, always have. She's fucking amazing. If if we will definitely be working with her in the future if we want to get any other logo or something like a design produced, I will one hundred percent go to her. Yeah, she did a good job. It's awesome. If if people remember Cody's album cover, it's the same kind of style. Um, and we, we kind of look like, uh, well, Caucasian Ninja Turtles. We kinda. look like Ninja Turtles that turned into humans. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's sweet and we love it. And I had one request and I said, make me thinner. And she did a good job. Now I look like a buff son of a bitch and Cody looks like a skinny wiener. So that's, that's okay. That's okay. I would rather look like a skinny wiener. That's fine. No, it is, it is great. I'm a hundred percent happy. Oh uh, yeah. I couldn't be any happier with it. I'm so excited for all of you guys to see it and we'll post it on socials and everything. So if you follow us on our Instagram, and all that stuff, we'll we'll put it up there. And are we gonna post it early so people? No, I'm no, gonna okay. post it on Friday. Okay, so we're po- we're gonna post it on Friday when the when they up when the episode uploads. Uh, so this is basically our year gift to all of you and to us. Um, mainly for us, not mainly me. mainly for us. You guys definitely <laughs> will not be as excited. As it's we better are. than looking at a fucking coffee table with a beer and yeah, chocolate. Yeah, it's shells. definitely definitely not <laughs> as exciting for you guys. It makes us look a lot more professional. It, it like really does. I am one hundred percent happy with it. This is our next step into furthering this podcast into what I we hope will be something fucking awesome. This is year one down, and we are on our fucking way, baby. Like this. I'm just really fucking excited about it. Like I said, I, I was super pumped. This is like the gift to me. And it came in perfect time. Perfect fucking time. Like the time couldn't have been any better. Right. Uh, so shout out to uh, Bunny Skull, the artist, um, or uh, she is Trippin' Bunnies on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, if you want to check out her, her socials, by all means, I recommend. Um, it is a great style. Um, it is very it is very universal um and she and she did this to order by our recommendations she was very polite yeah she took our requests how long did it take it took her um it took her uh she wasn't i told her no we, we told her no rush on the order uh basically i think it took her like less than a the, week uh it took her about a week and a half it took her about a week and a half but that's because we were in no hurry at all yeah. like we we did not care we were not trying to rush her um because she might have other stuff going on, which we understand completely. And she made it perfect. She so. made it absolutely perfect. Couldn't be happier. And it was literally, I'm just super fucking pumped. I'm super fucking excited to see, like, to have everybody else see it. I love it. Yeah. 100% happy. So thank you. Thank you again, Bunny Skull. So go check out her socials for all that great artwork. And we will definitely be working with her again. Damn right. Because it is fucking Fabulous! Yes. I love it. So look forward to that because if you if you see a logo in your in your podcast feed that you're just like what the fuck is that shit <laughs> then then that's us. Um, clearly, it's two bald happy bitches with beers. So I just gave it away, didn't I? Yeah, it's okay though. Uh, that doesn't that doesn't divulge what it looks like. It doesn't do it justice. It is pretty cool. Yeah, it does not do justice. All the talk I'm doing right now um, does not do justice at all because it is. It's awesome. It's and, excellent. Right. It's way better than just an edited picture. <laughs> way, way better than just a picture. With, yeah. With, I don't, I don't even know where you were going. I don't know if anybody ever noticed, but like there's a dog hair in that picture. <laughs> no, I never noticed. You didn't? No. Let me see if I can bring it up. Because Bo, Bo is white and he sheds. And his hair gets everywhere. Yeah, he sheds like no other. And I took the picture and it looked good. And then I, after I already uploaded it. 
it just it you can there's like a dog hair floating right in the middle <laughs> right above your o you see it that's a dog hair. That's a dog hair. <laughs> I never noticed <laughs> yeah. that. That's awesome. Yeah, if you ever, if you, if you and never, I don't know it. where you, I don't know where you were going with the shotgun shells. Like I don't know if the, you were trying to make this something a, cool, like man. a redneck country bumpkin man podcast. I don't I mean, know. This is definitely. I feel like this is definitely. This definitely gravitates towards men. I would. I. I. Tr- I would love for it to gravitate. 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 Sorry. And um, resonate with everybody. I don't know if we have a demographic. I yeah, I really don't know if we have really a demographic. I don't think I we have say, enough downloads to know. I would <laughs> say it's pro- our listeners are probably more males, but it might be a good mix of everybody. I I personally know that um, a girl I went to college with. Uh, shout out Kelsey, you're awesome. Love you. I haven't seen you in a long time. I wish uh, we could see each other more because I miss the hell out of you. So shout out to Kelsey. She's great. She has been listening since the beginning. Um, so that is one female that listens. I know some some ladies at your work uh, listen to the podcast. Yeah. So shout out to everybody that listens. Um, but Kelsey, I just gave a shout out to Kelsey just because she uh, sent me an article after the podcast was posted because it, it correlated with one of the articles we talked about last episode. So I was going to bring that up today for you. So thank you so much, Kelsey, and thanks for listening. And tell all your friends. Because uh, we need more listeners. <laughs> yes, sir, we do. Uh, so, we got together on Saturday, which was a very interesting day. Uh, very interesting indeed. Uh, we had to be, uh, the reason for that, we had to cancel the beer fest. Um, we had to cancel the beer we fest. We didn't have to cancel okay. They canceled They that. canceled the beer fest. We had to cancel our plans, but luckily we got a full refund, so that was nice. Yeah. Nice of them to... I still don't, that was, I still that don't was, know if I, the money went back in my uh, account. I, I, wonder, I wonder how much money that was, because there is easily a thousand people there, I think, every year. I don't know. It, More it's, than that. It's, uh, yeah, it's a huge, huge festival. It's a huge beer fest in Bloomington, Indiana, um, and... And uh, it's brought brought to us by the Brewers Guild of Indiana. So I would say it was upwards of three thousand. I think, and I th- yeah, probably honestly, honestly, last year when we went, it was but to nut. Yeah, I was just throwing out a thousand. There mu- there might be well over two thousand people. Yeah. Uh, but so maybe this spring or summer we can hit up the Columbus one. If it doesn't get canceled, uh-huh. um, I hope not. Um, but so we decided to, I decided to have my own little festival at uh, Cheyenne and I's place. And Cheyenne invited her sister and Ryan came. So it was just all four of us. We ordered a shit ton of Mexican food. Um, didn't get all of it. Didn't get all of it, which is fine. <laughs> that's that's fine uh, with everything going $80 on. $80 worth of Mexican food and didn't get all of I it. I mean, to be honest with you, we had a lot. We had a lot of food. We all four got fajitas, which means we all four get... I didn't get fajitas. Well, okay. I got nachos with no chips. <laughs> we had chips, though. Yeah, you had chips, but they're supposed to come with motherfucking chips. We have better chips than what they have. So, uh, but basically, and it was, since everybody got basically the same thing besides Cheyenne, I just... It kinda, all looked the same. It all looked the same. It because, was just uh, beef and chick, it all had, chicken, chicken with all peppers three, and onions. It all had three types of meat and peppers and onions in it. Yeah. I'm pretty sure they just like, make three orders of this and throw it in there. Pretty much. But it was still really good. It was, it was amazing. Yeah, we, it was, like I said, it was, it was a lot of fucking Mexican food. And, and that, which meant that everybody got a side plate and Ryan got an order of rice and beans on the side. So they gave we, me so many beans. And we filled, he filled up, they filled up two grocery bags full of food. Mm-hmm. And it was hot. It was super hot because they put it in the aluminum carrying things. It was crazy. So everybody ate food, got drunk. We, they played, uh, we played Dance Dance Revolution. Uh, Ryan and I sat on the front porch and drank beers and took the dog on a drunk walk Yeah, <laughs> around my apartment complex. It was, it, all in all, it was a great time. It, it really was. Uh, it was a fun time. So we, that's what we did. We did that on Saturday. And that's why I mentioned the, uh, the beer of the week, the Kona Big Wave, uh, the Golden Ale, tastes really good at 2 p.m. on a Saturday. Yeah, because that's you when, had one. That's when it took place. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, by far, that is a, that is a 100% ridiculously good beer yeah. and, I, and I, got I got fucking slitched I very got, very easy to get too so I recommend I got beer. super fucked up I just remember waking up and I was like hmm 
I was sitting in the chair, and supposedly I passed out with like a white claw in my hand. But I think I had like uh, shy, I went to bed. I think I, I had like seven beers and right. like eight white claws. <laughs> since I since I do since my weekend since my schedule for work does include the weekend, I got off early and I went in late that next day. I did, we did like a half a day the next day. Yeah. So I I was waking up to go in late. So I had to go to bed, and I was already tired because I had to wake up early that morning and um, just drag an ass anyway into work. So I went to bed, and Cheyenne informed me that you did fall asleep with it. You kept going in and out. Your head, you know, when your head does that like bobblehead thing, yeah. like when you see a baby about fall asleep and their head about <laughs> comes off their neck. Uh-huh. Yeah, you were doing that, and you had the white claw in your hand, and she's like, maybe I should. Take that out of his hand, and you just kept bobbing up and down. She's like, "Ah, oh, maybe not." It would have probably been then, all right because I've done right. that multiple times, and I've woken up and it's just sitting right there. And like then you a baby. finally, and then you finally, uh, you finally fell asleep completely, and uh, she uh, she covered you up. I think no, uh, no, okay. And then she, she's not that nice. She decided <laughs> to take the white claw out of your hand. Now, granted, it is hard seltzer and it won't stay in the carpet. But we also don't want hard seltzer in our uh, carpet. Right. So. <laughs> but yeah, Ma, I remember mom was always worried about us when we went to college because she was because she knew we were going to drink, of course. But she was always worried about us getting alcohol poison and stuff like that. And I was like, mom, that won't happen to me because I and usually pass out before I drink too much. And that's what happens. I fall asleep yeah. before I get too much alcohol in my body. And people, some people say, oh, well, 15, that's a lot. And I was like, yeah, but I'm a big guy. And, you know. Yeah, we were big in college and we could drink a lot. But it was, granted, it was shitty beer. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, you can drink a lot of shitty beer. <laughs> Nothing but fucking Ham's Light. I remember one time when I drank an entire 30 pack of Bush Light. Yeah, I said Bush Light. I'm a completely different person than I was back then. I stick my nose up at Bush Light now. Uh, sorry for people that don't drink Bush Light. Nothing wrong with that. It's just not, not for me anymore. I I made it known to everybody at the party I was at, even ran outside, and I decided to wear the 30-pack on my head and cut holes out for eyes for like an hour after Yeah, that. and you said you kept the tabs or whatever, and that's how you kept track. Yeah, a pocket full. I had, yeah, but you know, kids nowadays, they keep their tabs because keeping score on drinking beer is a thing when yeah. you're... When you're juvenile. And you and used to think those Mad Dog 2020s were the shit, and they were the, the most disgusting thing ever. They were just gross. Mad Dog 2020 is the grossest, the grossest, I don't even know if you can call it wine. It was a shitty it's wine. Like, it's like, take, you, you know, it's like, like somebody uh, took wine and mixed it with fruit juice. Like, take malt liquor, it's, a, it's like a malt wine. Like Boone's Farm, but not clear. Boone's Farm, but... I would rather drink white, Boone's. I would rather like, drink Boone's Farm. It's like your white trash sister in in her double wide. Nothing wrong with living in a double wide, but it was the same price. Like Boone's Farm is like four bucks. That yeah. was four dollars. It's piece. like your, it's like your white trash sister that's shit faced and breastfeeding at the same time. That's what she's drinking. She's drinking Mad Dog Twenty Twenty while she breastfeeds her child. Yeah, that is the equivalent to what in a I plastic had. wine glass. <laughs> yeah, and a plat. No, she's drinking it in a red Solo cup. Oh, okay. Yeah, so she, or, or she's just tilting the box of wine over her. Yeah, head. I used to be all about them things. Man, the fucking electric <laughs> blue raspberry. Whatever. The fuck yeah, I think it was. it's electric electric, electric watermelon. watermelon. Yeah, watermelon. Yeah, that those things. And now that I. I I bought one years ago. I think I bought one when I was still living here and I took a drink of it and I almost threw up because it was thick with sugar and it stuck to my teeth. Yeah. And I, I could not do it. Could not do it. And I'm not a big wine guy. The only reason why I drank those is because they were $2 a bottle mm. and they were a liter bottle. That's the, in college, you drink whatever you can afford, and that's what I could afford. But I would wind up drinking like four or five. But you could get like a case of hams for eleven dollars. Why would I want to drink hams beer? I don't know. No, you don't drink, you drink that. that sugary bullshit. Why uh, not? It was. It's terrible now. And hey, more power to all the college students out there and the young people drinking Mad Dog Twenty Twenty. Which, if you don't know what we're saying by Mad Dog Twenty Twenty, it's it's just called MD Twenty Twenty. It's the weird shaped glass bottles, and it's. Fruity colored and it's drinks. by the wine. Yeah, <laughs> it's by it's in the wine aisle because it's technically wine. It's like malt wine. Yeah, terrible quality. 
But hey, Mad Dog 2020, you're going strong. The college students are keeping you alive. The thing I miss is <laughs> Swag and Dragon. The fucking yeah, we had the, uh, the yeah. Chinese restaurant Dragon Two Thousand there in Vincent's. I don't know if it's still open or not, but that was the best Chinese food ever. You could still smoke in there, like on that one section. I remember there was a guy that, that was bigger than us, and he was just smoking like a freight train. And it, he was there before we got there and after we got there. And he had like six or seven places sitting there, and he just kept lighting them up and smoking. Now, now, guys, I know it, it was the best Chinese food we had when we were twenty one. Yes. Buffet style. Yes. Best buffet <laughs> style Chinese food we had when we were 20, 19, 20, 21 years old. That is not the same as it is today because it is the shittiest looking place in the shittiest looking building mm-hmm. and it was good quality back then. Oh, and the biggest Asian I've ever seen. Like, <laughs> he was like 6'5". We're not, we're not meaning that as a derogatory statement. No, he, he was, was, he was an, literally... He, he was he was like Mexican and Asian. No, he was not Mexican yes, and Asian. He was, he he was, was a Mexican. Chinese. He was a Mexican. Or a Mexican. No, don't say that. Why? Don't say that. No, he wasn't. I'm pre- he was he Asian. Was, no, he was a Chinese. He Maybe was, he was Samoan. He was... No, he was Chinese. Every person in there was Chinese. But he was like 6'6", six, six, 300 pounds. No, he wasn't 6'6". Six, six. He was easily 6'3 or 6'4. He was huge. Big guy. He he would wash the dishes in the back, and we only seen him when uh, he brought more clean dishes up. And he was the biggest Chinese guy I have ever seen. Now, he might not have been Chinese, but he was one of the biggest Asian men I've ever seen. Tallest in that, in that manner. He was a big dude. Big dude. He was probably in his 50s, 60s. He was not that old. He wasn't? We were remembering two different people. Uh, well, that's what I remember. I, I just remember he was, he's one of the biggest Chinese people I've ever seen because normally the, I, I don't know, he not, looked, he looked Asian. Normally the demographic. Chinese. He, we didn't know what he was. He was Asian. Right. He looked Asian, but he had like a Latin vibe right. to it. He very, no, no, he didn't. He wore a do rag. <laughs> he was washing dishes. He doesn't want his hair in the clean dishes. He didn't dishes. have hair. <laughs> He did not. And then they had the 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 other Asian guy who was like the nicest guy ever, and he always wore camo hats and loved country music, and he would talk to us all the time. Well, that's what happens when you grow up in rural Southern Indiana. You like country music and you wear fishing hats. Maybe the guy like fishing. But like we love this place so much, and but if like if you they didn't pass, they never passed out fortune cookies. They never gave them to you with your bill, so you would just go and grab one if you wanted one. But I remember you guys grabbed like three or four of them and they were all fucking moldy and yeah, shit. Yeah, they were moldy. I don't know how. <laughs> I don't know what causes a fortune cookie to mold, but I'm going to say it's, there an, it's, forever? it's an excess of five years sitting on a shelf. I'm going to say they got a, I'm going to say they got a shelf life of about five years, so probably a decade. But you, They've probably you, been sitting there for ten years. And I was always scared to use the bathroom like the first couple times I was there. Because the first time I walked in there, like, if you wanted a bathroom to shoot up in, that was it. Like, it was, like, the dimmest light ever, and it was all completely green. Green floors, like, in, like, a Call of Duty game. Like, if you played Call of Duty and you went into, like, a weird bathroom or something like that, like, in in the campaign mode or something, and it was just, like, a shitty, dirty toilet, a cracked mirror, and all that. That's exactly, it looked like a place that that's you would a do very, That's a very good reference because I guarantee on occasion people did shoot up in there. Probably. <laughs> but that's what it was. It was guarantee super it. cold, and it was, compl- like, super dark. And it was just, everything was green. The walls, the floor, even the sink was like a weird mint green. And it was just weird. But yeah, I, m- I miss that place. And we, they, but we they always played the same see, songs. See they always now, played the same but songs. But see now, here's the thing. We missed that place for what it used to be. It might be complete garbage now. It might be gone. There is, <laughs> there is, there is a lot of good, um, there is a lot of good Asian cuisine, uh, where I live, um, and it's it's not buffet style. It's made to order, and that shit is fucking fire. That's some good stuff right there. That is some dope shit. Uh, there's a, there's a lot of good food though where I live. We you need when this when the lockdown gets done, we need to go to that restaurant uh, with the um, Korean barbecue, the sushi. Yeah, and the barbecue. We just we need to go there because. We, I will sit here and order so many sushi rolls. It's unreal. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, honestly, it's I, I love sushi. Not, I don't like the raw sushi. I like the cooked kind, the cooked kind or the uh, just the vegetable based. I, I can't do raw fish. I just can't do it. It's just like a texture thing. When I when I see raw fish, 
I just, it just turns me off to it. It looks really pretty. Like, don't get me wrong. It's very good. It's basically like sushi, like a sushi. I don't, are they, uh, is it a sushi chef? What? Is that what they're called? Is that what people that make sushi are called? No idea. Sushi. I want. I want to call him like a sushi master because sushi roller. It's literally. It's literally like art. It, it, it's food art. Um. But it, it it really is like it's food art. I think he's a sushi chef. Sushi. That's what chef. I. That's what I typed in. Sous chef. No, sous chef is uh, second in command in the kitchen. Oh. They're in charge of like sauces. And Let's stuff. just say a sushi master. Sushi master. That's what I'm thinking. Like sushi master. Let's just let's call it whatever we want. A sushi master. Okay, I'm gonna call him a sushi. <laughs> it popped up like a fighting guy. It's yeah. It's a it's a it's a cooking game. Let's call him sushi masters. <laughs> okay. Sushi katsu. That's I think that's a restaurant. Okay. So uh, yeah, so a sushi chef, a sushi master. It is it's like it's any kind of other culinary artwork. I mean, this it's it's beautiful. Um like the the raw the raw fish, it's beautiful. I'm just not gonna eat it. I'll take the fish off and I'll give it to like my girlfriend's cat, and then I'll eat the rest of it underneath of it, but I won't touch the raw things. But it really is artwork. There's something beautiful about it, uh, like any other kind of culinary food because I don't want to say I'm a foodie, but I am. I love food. Don't get me wrong with my healthy lifestyle. I eat a lot and I, and I eat different types of food. So I love food. I really do. Don't get me wrong. I don't starve myself at all. I eat a lot. But, um, but yeah, there's just something about sushi. I just, there's something about I, like just getting all the different types of these sushi rolls and just fucking plowing through them like a, like a, like a lawnmower uh, through some tall grass. Just, I was just, Suck them down like a fucking vacuum. Never had it. You ever had sushi before? Nope. Oh, you're you're missing out, dude. Yeah, I don't know. That place I want to take you to does sushi, uh, and it looks fantastic. So I can't wait. All right. So we want to get in some new stories. New stories. All right. So what we got here? This is uh, from Kelsey. Um, thank you again for sending me this article. This correlates with the article we talked about last week um, in episode fifty three. Um, about the kid that uh, Twitch streamed for uh, like 190, 200 hours, something like 196. that. 196. Yeah, 196 hours. So, <clears throat> and I'm sure some of you have seen this uh, in the news because it came out earlier this week. Uh, this is a model of what a a gamer could look like in 20 years if all they do is play video games. Um, and Twitch stream, if that's all they do with their lives, they don't, they're not physically active. They just stay inside and they just, uh, Twitch stream. I mean, you can make money off of it and that's all you do constantly. This is what you could look like in 20 years. And they generated a model of a guy with, um, uh, gray, dark circles under his eyes, um, a caved in skull. That's right. A caved in skull, uh, from wearing headphones constantly, yeah. which I can see that happening. Um, his head is misshapen from that also. He is pale from not going outside. Uh, 100% uh, obese. Just a big fat body. Um, no muscle tone. His shoulders are narrowed because of not working out. Um, his hands are... The, the hands of the person are mangled with arthritis and tendonitis. Um from overuse of trigger fingers and uh, thumbs and stuff like that. Literally, the hands look like a tree branch. Uh, the ankles have enormous swelling in them from lack of blood flow. Uh, and there is no muscle de- definition in the legs either. Uh, so basically, when a it kind it, it kind of makes me think of when uh, not I'm not making fun of anybody, but when somebody is paralyzed um, from the waist down. Um, if they've been like that for years, their legs are, there's basically, I mean, it basically, it's no, just bone. They're yeah, it's basically no bone and skin and fat because there's no, they cannot use their legs. That's basically what you'll turn into people if yeah. you game for 20 years. And the ankles are completely swell because of lack of blood flow and probably got clots in them. Um, and then, uh, yeah. And, and hair in your ears from the lack of movement. So I guess lack of movement produces hair in your ears. Well, I'd say if you move, it has the wind has the ability to knock them out. I don't know. I don't. I, the wind knocks the hair out of your ears. I don't fucking know. I don't. I don't think that's Maybe it. Maybe you just wear headphones all the time. You don't have time to shave them. 
Um, let me. I just. I. That's the one thing that kind of trips me up a little bit. I'm gonna hairy ears from lack of movement. Um, also, I know that wearing headphones in your ears uh, makes your ear- it just popped up the post that you're right. looking at. Hairy ears. Um, I don't really think it matters. Is a warning sign. What does it mean? It's just symptoms and causes and all this shit. Does it really matter? Everybody gets hairy ears, especially when you get okay. old. Well, I do know that wearing headphones in your ears or over your ears also um, it, it urges your the wax in your ears to overproduce. Yeah, because of the lack of oxygen that goes into your ears. So if you do wear headphones in your ears or over your ears constantly, you will have to uh, clean those out um, more than regular. Uh, I know when uh, we worked at our at the call center, we had to wear headphones. 100% for eight hours a day straight. Yeah, I got and, an ear infection. Right. Multiple. We, right. We had to, uh, we had to clean our ear. I had to clean, I usually clean my ears out every morning, but I had to do it at least twice a day. And even on the weekends when I didn't, I would still have to do that. And, and so it makes the earwax in your ear produce very rapidly from yeah. wearing the headphones. So, a word of advice, just get outside. Video games are fun for like, uh, leisure time and hobby and right, stuff like right. that. Get away but, from just to get away from reality. But don't do it all day because it's right. Like we we were hanging out and you know shy sister was there and she was upset because she ate turnips in a video game. That and, was a that was it was very funny. She was now I don't but these know, video games today right. they let people escape real life because you start a new exactly life. by all means escape real life. Check out a reality. There's nothing wrong. It's just like us drinking alcohol. We want to get out and escape reality. Have have a good have a good time and enjoy your fucking life. But also, you gotta live your fucking life, people. Yeah. Like you can't live in this false reality. I know it seems great and wonderful and flawless, but um, and uh, let's be honest, people, you can't be drunk all the time unless you're a functioning alcoholic. But still, you're why are you just, talking about people being drunk? You're so sad per- because we check out a reality by being drunk. It's it's just one of the but you gotta I check, check I drink you, to have fun. Right, but you gotta come <laughs> I, I drink socially to have a good time with other people and, and to feel that that buzz. That's really what I do. But I then I, I I slow down and I, I have that discipline and I bring it back to reality because I know I'm going to feel like garbage. You're talking about people who are, are alcoholics. They drink to escape reality. Exactly. That's what happens. That's what happens when you when you uh, want to check out and you can't fucking come back. You turn into an alcoholic or a drug addict or um, you your skull gets dented in by headphones. <laughs> That's what happens. So, do you want me to keep going? I got No, I don't. Okay. <laughs> so, thank you, Kelsey, for that article for sending me that. I really appreciate it. Thank yeah, you for thanks, listening. Yeah, thanks, Kelsey. Um, so, a Ontario company reminds residents not to recycle unwanted swords. So, in Ontario, Canada. <laughs> what? What the fuck? Unwanted swords? Yeah. There, is there like some sword emporium? No. Uh, so, in Ontario, a recycling company is reminding residents to use some discretion when getting rid of unwanted items after someone attempted to recycle a sword. So, <laughs> the Blue Water Recycling Association in South Hur- Huron, uh, Canada, um, this made their April edition. I guess they have a newsletter or whatever. Uh, this is the most interesting thing to shock this town in a decade. No, not really. <laughs> I, I guess they I find got- weird shit all the time, but they... Made a this made their April edition of most unwanted things. They do really find weird shit all the time. Yeah, this just made their April edition. This um, is that's crazy. What is this? What is it called? Um, Blue Water Recycling Association. Uh, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna look that up. Um, but someone tried to like they have blue boxes, I guess, in Canada where they can recycle stuff, and somebody. Uh, attempted, or well, they did put a metal sword in the recycling bin, and it got all the way to the plant. Um, it said that this could have caused uh, numerous damage to the machinery, expensive, you know, expensive costs, even safety issues, health and safety issues to the employees and stuff like that. Uh, so the association said the sword's former owner might have been better off turning in the weapon to a secondhand store in like a pawn shop or something like that. Um, but it says just because uh, something is made of metal that may be perfectly recyclable 
uh, at local sca- uh, scrapyard doesn't mean that you can throw it in your blue recycling bin, which in the recycling bin is like aluminum cans and all this shit. But he's do, he, now. Do these get picked up curbside? Yeah, it's like curbside pickup. Who's the dummy that picked up a sword? I'm guessing it's a giant blue bin. Yeah, it might be. Um, but he says people. Uh, he lists things that people put in there: uh, pots, pans, bakeware, chains, electrical, extension cords, nuts, bolts, and etc. etc. Uh, these don't go in the recycling bins. They go to an actual recycling center because they have that machinery a, a bin that people pick up at your house is for like aluminum cans and um you know stuff like that that's they can just put in like um go to a recycling uh plant now you just have to go to a dump for everything else or a pawn shop or whatever so people be recycling swords a fucking sword in canada here's a bro of it. bro go to goodwill it's like a four and a half Ta- foot sword. hey look guys if you if you don't if you don't want to keep you Dude, can't that's like take, a William Wallace You can't sword. take swords to Goodwill. Not a sword. Make it into something cool. Melt it Melt it down. Take it to somebody to melt it down. Not I'm everybody sure. has forges. If you don't want to keep... If you don't want to keep this fucking sword, bro, like... Do, do what they say and take it to the dump. Yeah, take it to... The, or, or you could not take it to the dump and then build on to Trash Island and make it dangerous. Like... The, not, if everybody starts taking their fucking swords to trash and they migrate to trash island in the middle of the ocean, some little kid that's walking on it to get his food for that day is going to walk on a fucking sword. The trash people will have something to fight us with. And nobody wants trash island Ugh. pirates, people. Come on. And that's literally, that's not like a legit, a legit William Wallace sword from Braveheart. That thing's it looks four more like feet a, long. It looks more like a pirate sword, Teddy. <laughs> Not a William Wallace sword. If it's four feet fucking long. The William Wallace sword was like almost six feet tall. If you didn't know. I couldn't I couldn't find anything like a... It's their Facebook page. Oh, okay. I wouldn't worry about it. I mean... I just want to see uh, if there's any other crazy shit that goes on. See, they have a list of acceptable recyclable stuff. Oh, that's pretty normal. Is that a gun? <laughs> no, it was not a gun. It looks like a gun. Probably a squirt gun. Get no, it's not a gun. Looks like a flare gun. <laughs> it really does. Oh, go it away. It makes me want to log in. I don't want to log into your... Look, there it is right there. Dad, that's crazy. That is insane. Sword. But it's a good thing they found it before um, do you it went think, into the machinery. I mean, honestly, do you think that the guys that pick it up or the men and women that pick it up... Do the are, do you think they're like it's a, as a precaution they're supposed to open it to make sure everything's okay? No, I'm pretty sure it's just like a regular garbage can. I'd say because I know that when we were in college, the way the trash works there, um, it is it is only for that city because it's per the mayor made that rule. Now, the reason why this was we had to go to the um, the recycling or sorry the uh, scrapyard or trash plant wherever we would get these stickers. Each sticker had to get put on a bag. So every bag had to have a sticker in your trash receptacle. The trash receptacle was free, but the stickers cost, I think. Yeah, see, it's just it's just a regular truck where they have that arm right. that comes out and dump it. So I think, so I basically, I think the, uh, so the bit, the receptacle uh, container is free, but the stickers cost, okay, these are big. Yeah, these are big. Yeah, that's sort of fit in there. Yeah, these are big recycling things. So, uh, but the trash receptacle container was free. But the stickers cost uh, like three three dollars a sticker, which is crazy. One bag of trash is, costs you three dollars a bag. It gets expensive if you produce a lot of trash, and I can understand that. But the actual city company that does this, if you did not have a sticker on your bag, they would dig to the bottom of the bag to make sure every single bag bag had a sticker. And if it didn't have a sticker, they would leave that bag in the container for you to find. <laughs> just to, to fucking spite you. Yeah. You didn't pay $3 for this for this fucking sticker to you know take it to this dump. It was just it was ridiculous. Okay, we got time for a couple more. Yeah. So, Jägermeister is releasing a booze-scented bath bomb so you can smell like liquor uh fresh out of your steaming hot bath. Gross. Who the f- who the fuck who want to smell like black licorice out of your back? Like, like you like when I used to get drunk in college or in high school, wherever. Um, whenever I was getting shit faced on a regular, 
I would smell like booze going into the shower and come out smelling like f- fresh and good coming out. I don't want to come out smelling like black licorice. A lot of people love black licorice. I don't know. I don't get it either. Let's be honest. I uh, Let's be honest. If you want to smell like black licorice, that's fine. Just buy this. <laughs> it comes with two Jägermeister shooters. That you can oh, is that it? Was that the whole story? No, no, no. Oh. Here's another one. Uh, there is also, uh, there's also more, uh, companies jumping on this, like, weird, like, scented bath bomb craze. So, uh, Geeky Soaps has produced a Baby Yoda bath bomb. Oh, that'll sell like crazy. Uh, Flawless CBD has created a CBD bath bomb. They already have those. Yeah, they already have those. Um, let's see, the, what is, uh. Okay, C, uh, KFC X Village Vanguard created a, fi- a fried chicken bath bomb. Ew. Uh, so it is a uh, it's a bath bomb shaped like a, a drumstick, and it smells like fried chicken. Do you want to smell like fried chicken? No, that's, that's like, like that's McDonald's like, candles. That's like the fried chicken Crocs. Yeah. Like your feet smell like yeah, fried chicken. They don't they don't smell. Yeah, they do. Yeah, the, the little the little emblems. Yeah, they smell like fried chicken. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, the little drumstick chicken emblems or the whatever they are. The, so they're like scratch and sniffs. The, yeah, they just see so your feet smell like fried chicken. Huh. Like I I would rather take bad feet smell than fried chicken feet smell. It would just stink horribly. I don't want to smell like fried chicken. Uh, so there is also a Pokemon uh, bath bomb, which is shaped like a Pokeball, which it makes you smell like <laughs> by Blonde Blueberry on Etsy. Um, uh, yeah, what does a Pokeball smell like? Plastic. Ma- magic plastic? Plastic. <laughs> magic plastic. <laughs> um, and then a poop bath bomb made by, uh, Fizzy Friends. Which makes you smell like shit. <laughs> <laughs> makes you, do you want the, are you tired of smelling clean out of the shower? Start smelling do like you, shit. <laughs> do you want, do you want spice in your life? Buy our poop emoji bath bomb. Out with the skinny jeans, in with the shit bath bomb. <laughs> that's not, that's not, not, that's not a good logo. I know, but skinny jeans are out, bro. So, I have a poll for you, or a quiz for you, Ryan. Okay. Not a poll, a quiz. And then I have another article if you want to go into that or if we have time. No. So, research shows that 23% are unable to poop without their mobile phones. Um, The source is QS Supplies. So, 23% are unable to poop without their mobile phones. Um, but how many admit to dropping their phone in the toilet? Can you imagine over a fifth? So one in five people, just over one in five people admit to having their phone when they take a shit. I am guilty sometimes. Mainly it's in my pocket. Um, that's where I get a lot of stuff done is on the toilet. Yeah. Mainly I, mainly I, it's in my pocket when I'm, when I'm on the toilet. I'm not really, I'm usually not on it. Uh, so how many people admit to dropping their phones in the toilet? Is it 1 in 20, 1 in 10, 1 in 5, or 1 in 3? 1 in 10. Wrong. It is 1 in 5. So 23%. So 20. I know a lot of people that don't so, aren't on their phones, but it's in their back pocket when they pull their pants right, up. It right. flips out. So check this out. So one, so 1 in 5 people admit to taking their phone to the toilet with them. Also, 1 in 5 people have dropped their fucking phones in the toilet. I know a lot of people that have dropped their phones in the toilet multiple times. I dropped my phone in the toilet one time in college before a class. I took a shit. Didn't have time to flush. When my phone fell in the toilet, there was still shit in the toilet. Ew. <laughs> and I was, was... I remember that. And it was 15 minutes before class started. And so I'm like... I had to do it. Like, I could not leave my phone in there and risk it getting flushed. I had to pull the phone out in shit water. Yeah. And after I got done, I, I wrapped it in toilet paper. And after I got done, I took it to the sink. Literally, because, I mean, it's already fucking wet. I washed it off in the sink with soap, and then I took it home and put it in rice, and magically it came back to life. See, I washed two days later. I washed mine that same year, and it it fried it. So. Well, you dried it too, didn't you? No, no, no. It was in. The well, bottom. I feel like well, I feel like once it goes, I was through missing. A hole. I was missing it. I I was like, where's my fucking phone? And I went and I was like, what the fuck? And I looked, and it was just it was like the water had already started running. In, yeah. in the in the washing machine, I was like, "Shit, they're in my pants." Well, I feel like once you go through like a wash cycle, you're just you're just screwed. It didn't, it didn't go through a wash cycle; it was just filling up. 
And then when it, the one thing you don't do, you don't turn it on. I turned it on and it it didn't work anymore. Yeah, yeah. You're supposed to. You're supposed to. I, I think I tried to turn it on, but um, I decided not to. And then I, we put it in rice and it came back to life. I, I waited for a couple of days and it came back to life. Yeah. So luckily, luckily my was that your iPhone four. <laughs> that was my iPhone three GS. Yeah. <laughs> it was in an otter box in that I still use an otter box to this day. I do not trust any. That's my personal preference. I just don't trust anything besides an otter box or some kind of heavy duty case like that. Um, because uh, let's just say I envy no case people because they are extremely brave. <laughs> right. You're extremely brave if you don't carry a case. But I I don't envy you when your phone looks like uh, the shattered mirror in the dingy bathroom in the Dragon 2000 restaurant from college. Exactly. <laughs> so, that's the episode then, right? Yep. We are done. Thank you so much, every single person out there, for tuning into this episode. Our one-year cumiversary. <laughs> Gross. Our one-year cumiversary episode. Uh, we've been doing this for a year. Um, and I don't plan on stopping anytime soon. No, sir. All right. So thank you so much for tuning in. We love the fuck out of you. Thank you for every download. Thank you for every listen. Um, email us, hit us up on socials. Yeah. So- everything will be in the description. Uh, we love you guys. Thanks for listening. Uh, don't take any shit. Wash your hands, wash your ass, uh, make a change. If you want to change your life. If not, I don't really give a shit. It's your life. Do what you will. Let's end this show. Stay safe, everybody. Wash your hands, you filthy animals. Like Ryan said, you want to make that change? Do it. It's all up to you. If you have any questions, comments, anything you want, everything, just email us in the description. Love the fuck out of you. Love the fuck. Love the fuck. Love the fuck out of you. (laughs) Love the fuck out of you guys. Thank you so much. Now, when life gets hard, when life gets you down, you milk that motherfucking pig, everybody. Peace. We out. Yeah.